we were looking at these blueberries and um, Laura, let's talk again about what we saw in this blueberry picture. We saw the colors um, and I'm writing them down on my paper. Like I like to be able to write them down. So Laura and I were talking, Laura, we saw blue and what else did we see? Um, it almost looks like we see black unless it's very dark blue in the shadows. And then we see white. And that's what we discussed. Um, it isn't like just painted on white or it isn't the white paper. It's more of like a, a dirty blue water wash. <laughs> yeah, it's just a really light wash. And then I did it on my paper here that you can see. Um, so we don't leave it white because if we left it white, it would really stand out but it is really light, 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 light. So you just wanna make sure at the end you would do a little wash. You might leave it white when you first start, but um, you, and you made a really good point. The deep dark parts, you said dark blue or black. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you, it's definitely, I think it's a dark blue. And the reason why is I find when we're painting, like this section, you can see my arrow, this section down here looks really, really dark. You could do black, but what might happen is it would look like a hole. If you use the exact color black, it would look like a hole. So we're gonna use a really, really dark, dark, dark blue. And we're gonna call that really dark, dark, dark blue. If you wanna put a little dab of uh, black in there, or if you wanna mix your own black, that would be, that would be uh, good as well. Okay, let's go on to the next picture. Where are my arrows? There. Okay, this was the next one that we talked about. Um, this picture was really cute, and we talked. I said something about the the picture. It's not my picture. Hi, Margie. How are you, Margie? Sorry, Margie. I thought it was Margie. Um, we we are talking about these blueberries and this picture, and it's not my picture. So it, there is a fuzzed out line down here. You can see with the arrow, there is a fuzzy whoever's picture it was. So if I were to say, um, you know, I'm using this picture and I'm going to paint this composition, I would never say it's my photo or it's just my picture. I would always give the the photographer credit. This particular picture, you can't see who the photographer is because it's blurred. I got these on the internet. Um, I definitely would say this is a photographed by another person. I maybe photographed unknown, photographer unknown, but you always want to give credit to who the picture is, uh, who the picture's from. Also, the, the berries, we talked about a little bit about how the berries are facing. Like this berry is the total side. This berry is facing up to the left. This berry is facing down to the bottom right. So that'll be interesting when you start drawing. They're not a perfect circle. They're kind of more a little flatter and oblong a little bit. So when you're drawing your final drawing for your painting, you want to definitely record that. You want to, you want to take note on how your blueberry is going to look. So this was the final painting that we would like to use today that we're going to paint with and look at. Um, it's, I love this picture. I think this is a perfect picture because it looks just like a little, um, I don't know. I think that the, looking at it closely, uh, this little edge where the stem, where it was attached to the stem kind of has a little petal and flowers. Do you see it, Laura? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Definitely. It's so pretty. And like, it kind of makes it look like a little flower and look at here. It's, it's definitely a little flower. You definitely see some shadows and shading. The light source is over here. Um, look at this little, it's an oblong type of circle, like a tire in a way. It's not a full round ball, but it's like a tire. Now, some of them are more round, some of them are plump. You can paint yours however however you like or love, no worries. But this is the one we're going to do. We're going to do three. And I need to make this a little smaller so you can see my drawing. Um, don't get too hung up on the drawing part of it. This is to be fun. It's not going to be perfect. We're just going to have some fun. We're doing blueberries together. Uh, I'll draw it out a little bit, and then and then we'll go from there. So I see three. Uh, I'm kind of drawing the outside, and I'm going to sketch it a little darker so you can see it. But normally when I'm sketching, I really don't sketch Actually, I want it bigger, 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 bigger. 
bigger. So I didn't sketch hard, and that's what I was just about to say. <laughs> Don't sketch really hard because um, it's hard to erase that. So if you sketch lightly and you change your mind, then you can you can easily just erase it. This this one I have here right in the front. He's kind of the biggest one that I have. I'm going to turn my phone a little bit so you can see it. So I'm going to um, go ahead and draw that one first because I really wanted to do this big. Really lightly. I'm just sketching that one in. Then this next one I see is it's its, it's, its own shape. It's not molded into it. I see I'm going off the page a little bit, and you know what, I like that. I like when you do a painting and it goes off the page. So if yours is going off the page, wonderful. Let it go off the page a little bit. It, it adds interest to your painting. There are a lot of extra lines in here I'll probably try to get out, but first we're just doing our sketch and getting it in. This is the one that I said looked like a tire shape. So it's not really perfectly round. It definitely has highlight over here from my light source, I'd like to draw an arrow. Draw an arrow on your light light source. Um, today is 528, am I correct with that? Yep, 528, 2000. Date your paper, this is lesson 15, it's a blueberry. I put in the blues, some blue shades we talked about. Um, I love it when you put a date on because then you can come back and look at it as we get this, our book is gonna be full, which is really fun. Okay, so I'm just drawing that little circle in there. I wanna hint at what the the little, I'm gonna, can we call it a flower? What do you think we should call those blue things? Anybody they know? Like they do look kind of like a flower. Anybody else know? If you guys know, can you write it in the notes there for me? Um, even if you're not live, write it in the notes because uh, Laura and I will go back and look at this. Um, and see, and then we'll be able to <laughs> correct our, our language. I like that. I like that. All right, there we go. I'm gonna erase a few, a little bit. I like that one little flower. Do you see how it's just, I'm gonna pull it up a little closer. It's really sketched in. This, this one is sticking up. That one's laying down a little bit. It kind of goes to a point. Um, all right, let's see this one. This one's off to the side a little bit, looks like to me. All right, Robin, welcome. I'm so glad you just got here. What works the best on this whole situation, sorry, that's me, is uh, my phone onto the computer, which is ridiculous. <laughs> Gotta do better. Uh, we'll figure it out. Um, any case, we're doing the flower part of the blueberry. We decided to call it flower petals. I always, when I'm painting a flower, sometimes I call the leaves a flower, the petal, <laughs> because sometimes they look like a leaf. But this one we're calling this flower part the petals. Really lightly sketch it in. You guys can definitely do this again later. And, you know, just do this as your practice and have fun with it and enjoy that it's not going to be perfect. If yours is perfect, awesome. Please post it. Make sure you guys post this on Art Yourself Studio because I love to see what you're doing. Um, I, I do appreciate being able to see you commenting that you're here, but um, definitely post it. I'd love to see what you've got going on. I'm gonna go ahead and put one leaf here. I know it's bumping into where my arrow is for the light source there. I'm gonna put another one over here. And if it's off the page, that's okay too because the green color will let you know that that's the, a leaf. All right, uh, it looks to me like there's a little bit of a dark shading down here. So I'm gonna just sketch it in for our purpose. Um, and let's get going. So how many blues do you have in your palette? I have a couple. I'm just gonna lay them down here so that when I decide what colors I wanna use for this blueberry, I've got my colors and I can say, oh, that's too dark, that's too light. There are so many different blues, which is uh, very fun, very fun. If you wanted that dark, there is a really uh, dark, dark, dark blue. Where's my label? This cobalt blue is really dark. Payne's gray is also a fun one. Um, it's kind of a gray blue. Oh. 
one. Let's see which one this one. This is Windsor blue. This is Windsor blue. So don't I'm I'm on purpose not putting the color names in there because I really don't want you to uh, worry about the the colors you're using. I want you to have fun and play with the colors that you have. So um, we are. Let's see. I I also made. I took the blue and then added this uh, a little teeny 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 bit of black. But you know what else would be pretty? You could also add is a little bit of purple. And, and look at that color. Isn't that pretty? Instead of having the black, you can make it a really dark purpley blue. And if it's not dark enough, add some um, sepia. This that color to it you can just add to it I think you can see my page any case it'll give you that that hint of it so now we're gonna start with our lightest blue and it's gonna be watery it's just gonna be a wash so I just want to wash it on it's okay if I go over the others I have a paper towel in hand today we're gonna use paper towel one of these days we're gonna do some stuff with frisk I'd like you to experience using that frisk so if you get a chance to order some please do. If you don't have frisk, uh, you can go ahead and use a candle. I'm not going to do the leaves, but I am going to, um, I'm just putting in a little bit of a wash. So th in the past, we've done wet on wet. And this time we're going to do, we did, uh, this is wet on dry. The paper was dry and I'm just washing in this colors. I'm doing a really light glaze. And I think you can see that we're just putting in the, the shape, like uh, this one is going around this way. So I'm, I'm putting in the strokes of the shape that I want that, that blueberry to be. And then I'm putting in the shape that I want this blueberry to be. And again, it's not too serious. It's just to have a little bit of fun. Um, and then this one is going this way. So they're all three shaped or going a little, their direction is a little bit different. Now, the next thing we want to think about is the color behind. So this, this one is the furthest back. So this will have a dark edge. Let me go ahead and lay it in there. I'm going to take my darkest color and I'm just going to pop it in there with a nice straight line. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to, I think you oh, might see on my left ear, I'm going to uh, push it out. I'm going to put it in and then push it out so that it's, it's the medium. We're going to, we also can get a little darker, but I want to add that color here, but I want to keep it dark down there. So then take a little bit of water and go ahead and make that shape. If it gets too watery, if you find like it's getting too messy and it's getting too watery, just let it dry. Go somewhere else on your painting and come back to it. Uh, if it gets, too, watercolor is kind of, can be frustrating when you're wanting more control and it's just bleeding and going all over the place, just let it dry a little bit. Let some of that water evaporate. We're here in Michigan and we are fine. We are not too dry of an area. It's not full on summer yet. It's kind of wet outside anyway. So our paintings will take a little longer to dry. So I can get that darker, but I'm not going to do it just yet. I'd like to lay in my colors here. So this one's going to be the next dark value here because it's going to be behind, it's behind this blueberry. And Laura, please feel free to pop in. Anyway, you guys, I can see you. So type in the chats if there's something you have a question or if I'm missing something. Please type in the chats. I really appreciate it. Love to hear what you're saying. I'm going to let that flower petal stick out a little bit. I'm kind of making the choice to let it like highlight a little bit on the edge there. Uh, I'm outlining it. It's another thing called negative painting. I'm kind of painting around it, but I'm still going to try to get that shape here because I'll, I'll address that later, but I do want that to uh, stand out. As I'm looking at the picture and I'm looking at my um, blueberry, I see that there's a, let's see if you guys can see it with my cursor. There is a, right up here on the top, there's like a, a light shadow here. Um, this light shadow, I'm going to try with my brush 
and this is a 10, which is huge. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm using a 10. Please use a six or a, I guess, yeah, we were using that. We Look at, I wanna show you, we did this really pretty um, hibiscus and I was using a, a 10 on that one. This one I used, I think a 10 or an eight. So uh, I you have more room to push and and <laughs> that was our let, Laura's taking our set my session two uh, watercolor classes and she she's a little more advanced now but I'm so thankful that she stayed on here so I have a ten I can switch um, if you're using a smaller one that's fine it might like a four or six might be too small so try an eight um, get your brush wet first and then squeeze the water out. And the reason why I'm happy that you said something, thank you, Jan, about the brush, is because now I'm gonna really, I wanna get back to that highlight spot. And I'm gonna try to pick it up with my brush. It needs to be a little more wetness. Not a lot, because it will pick up the paper, because we are using um, uh, mixed media paper. So I'm just gonna give a hint of that. I'll wash over it later, but I wanna place in my, my highlights before it gets too dry and I'm, I'm rubbing it out. Remember when I talked about the whiteness at the beginning um, when we looked at the whole picture? If I left that white, it would really stand out like a sore thumb. It would, it would not blend in, but do you see how I was able to pick up some of the paint and now I've got a really nice highlight there? Um, I see there's a nice little highlight at this edge of that one too. Uh, I don't wanna be too picky about it, but I love that we can talk about it so that as you're painting, you can think you know, you could just think a little bit about, oh yeah, that's how I'm gonna get some shape in there is just adding those highlights. Let's go ahead and add this color here. Um, I, I love the idea of purple. I don't know why I didn't do a little more purple, but we'll, we'll keep these more blue. Maybe, maybe I'll take a little purple. <laughs> I just like it. Make them, some blueberries are kind of purplish, aren't they? Yes. But I, I'm adding it because I like it because I want to. So therefore, you guys can add what you want because you like it and you want to. This side is gonna be darker. I still wanna outline those flowers or the you know that flower shape. Um, I don't want this to be darker than the one above it because it's on top of it. That one should be underneath. But this side is gonna be dark because that's where the sh shadow is. That's where the sun is coming from over here, so this side has to be darker. And with an eight, you have a little more control. That's for sure. I'm glad you asked what size brush, so thank you. That was Jan, I think. Hi, Lori Lane, how are you? I can't wait to see your um, blueberries. I really appreciate every time you post for me. I love seeing what you guys are painting. So I appreciate that. Even if you're not happy with how it looks, don't worry how it looks. It's really just to be fun and, and be yourself. I notice some people are even um, like repainting it. They're painting it with me live and then they go ahead and either rewatch and paint it again and then post that picture. That's fine. That's not cheating. That's okay. <laughs> um, if you find that you're, I'm going to go really close. If you find that this blueberry is bleeding into that blueberry, do you see there's a little space that I've left there? You can, you can freely leave a little bit of a space between the two if you want to, and then come back and do a wash over it. Um, I do like how I, I lifted this paint up a little bit here as well. When it's semi-dry, you can kind of lift it. If it's all the way dry, don't worry, just leave it. Um, this has a nice space between there. I know my pencil lines are showing, but that's okay. Uh, I notice, see if you can see this here. I notice that there's like sporadic purple, blue here. I notice that it's not all solid one color. So what might be kind of fun is if you just take your dark color and just dab it in and get that shape. That's what uh, drawing is mostly about, is just drawing shapes. And so the more shapes you see and you put in, the more exciting your uh, painting's gonna be. And we started a little late today, so um, we're gonna keep going if that's okay with you guys. I hope you don't have to get off just yet. But uh, this shape I wanna put in here, of course I'm gonna leave my little highlight there. And the technique I'm using, we call, is just dabbing. I'm just dabbing the color in there. I wanna do some dark uh, shapes underneath these, 
the flower parts. I notice there's a shadow there and look, I'm just going to pull it out. Simple, not, not real busy, not too crazy, just kind of a little shadow underneath. And I really didn't use black or gray. Um, when I first started painting, I, I really thought that's how you got shadow was black and grays. And I'm, I'm not, I'm just using a little darker of the blue that's already on there. Uh, I could do some more dark here. I, I, I'm gonna ah, listen to me. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to leave the um. I'm going to leave that color there, and then this is going to be behind. So I'm just going to dab it in. I want that shape, but I also want to leave. Make sure it stays behind that one on top. Um, there's a little shape on here just to pull it together. If it looks too too shapey. That's just one technique. It's kind of fun. If you want to make it smooth and rounded, just go ahead and look, I'll just wash it right out. I like the shapey. I think it's artistic, but um, you know, it depends on how you decide what kind of drawing you want to do. Notice I'm leaving the middle and I'm, I'm, I'm just doing that because um, I just want to like, I know that when I get to that point, it's going to probably be done because that's simple and it's going to be, and I don't want it to be done. I want to keep painting. Um, let's do the little blobs. I'm using more of this darker blue and let's do some of the blobs on here to get this to look round. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I definitely can see you today. So if you have any questions, let me know. Laura, thinking any questions? Mm, I don't have any yet. I'm just trying to get those shades in. <laughs> good, 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 good. I don't want to go too fast. Plus, Laura and I have been painting now probably since one o'clock. We, yeah. and I think a lot of times the two and a half hours is a really good time for session for painting. Then you just need to take a break. I I think what's going to happen to Laura is. When she's finished with this blueberry, when we finish, she's going to go back and look at her hibiscus and she's going to realize how beautiful it is. <laughs> because when, <laughs> when no, I'm, I promise you, I know you're laughing, but I'm serious because sometimes when you're looking at something so close and intense, you you know, you, you just don't see it. And then you walk away and you come back and there it is. It's perfect. So um, you're going to like your hibiscus. In fact, maybe you should show us. Oh, I don't want that big. Sorry, guys. Also, when the paint dries, you get a different perspective, too. Um, oh, I just lost the blueberries. Yes, that's a really good point. That, sorry about this, you guys. Why am I losing all this? I lost our blueberry picture. Uh, that's a really good point. So what Laura is saying is um, when your paint dries, it is lighter than... Open up, baby. It is, dries lighter, so it will look... I really wanted to just get rid of that window and just leave this blueberry here. How are your blueberries looking? Are you guys happy with them? Coming along. Good. Did you like having the three? I like doing odd number. It's funny. It's kind of a rule, you know, not a rule. People like odd numbers. I think that's too big now. I think you guys, oh, there we go. Let's just look at it and I'll make it a little smaller but thanks for putting up with me you, you guys this is you're being so patient I appreciate it um you do want odd numbers I think it makes it more interesting and I think I think why hi Chris yay Chris from Brazil is here and I gotta say Chris her name is it's Chris VK Chris is that your Instagram handle as well do you use the same um, Chris VK because you guys should follow her on Instagram she is a beautiful watercolorist she has some beautiful watercolors that she's doing she's in Brazil so they are an hour ahead of us right they're ahead she's ready for happy hour an hour before we are <laughs> oh anyway um, you should follow her on Instagram check her out so here we go now mine's dried I fiddled a little bit I think that's good I'm looking at it um, the the best thing to do is look at yours like take a picture of it through your phone or look at it uh, negative turn it around um, because you'll see things that'll stand out so for me right now while I'm painting with you guys I can see I'm gonna tune I need this to be this needs to be smaller I guess oh well there we go did you guys see my cursor I was so proud look how big and fat that arrow is 
I was like, and look, it can go green. I said, I'm going to make this big and fat so everybody can see it while I'm pointing and, and drawing circles. I was so excited. So maybe the technology is still a little funny, but hey, <laughs> the arrow works. All right. Any case, I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it through the, um, the phone is directed to the screen. And now I'm looking up at the screen and I can really see some things that I want to change and add. Um, that's what I'm just saying. You might want to, when you're painting, take a break from it and look at it. Sometimes take a picture of it. Uh, when you take a picture of it, you see it in a different way and that'll help you decide, oh, it needs this or it needs that. Uh, I'm kind of happy with how it's going. How about you, Laura? Are you liking yours? Um, I am. I'm working on my direction of the light hitting us. So. Okay, good. Yeah, we've done a lot of that work. Um, this one, now I'm looking, I do want a little bit of a shape here, but this one, I want it to be even darker. So another key when painting watercolors is you want a light, a medium, and a dark. And right now, if I squint my eyes, squint your eyes, I see some dark, I see a lot of light, and I see some medium, so I've got it. But let's make it a little more exciting. And the way you do that is I'm going to add a little more dark. Uh, I don't start out adding it dark. We Remember we started out adding this section and we put a dark in there? Well, I didn't do the dark dark, like this dark, because I know at the end I'm going to come back through and I'm going to really make that nice and dark. Um, I really want this to be behind that one, so I'm going to put a nice dark there. Uh, I'm going to leave it alone, but as Laura and I were doing on our hibiscus, we uh, realized like when you, if you just left it dark like that, it might stare at you like a sore thumb. So you might say, well, gosh, I don't want it to be that I'm losing my shape. I don't want it to be that dark. You can blend it out, but the reason why I'm not blending it out right now, and you will have fun, you'll figure out when the best time to blend it out is. Um, the reason why I'm not is because I know these centers are going to be really dark. If you look at the picture, there's some darkness in there. And I want, I want to make sure that my painting is balanced. So I'm going to balance it out. So let's go ahead and put that in. This I was so excited. Here we go. Uh, I see that there's, I'm just going to kind of outline that, the circle to get that edge. I'm going to outline the inside. The inside is going to be dark. The inside of this is going to be dark. I also, as I'm looking at it, I also see some uh, brown in there. And that must be where, you know, what is it? The belly button of the, isn't that funny? The belly button. You guys can tell me what it is. Those of you that know, uh, there is a shadow in there. So we're just going to lay that shadow in. Um, you also have a little bit of a line you can see those lines in there. I'm just going to leave those. Sometimes if you overwork it and wash it all out, you'll lose some of this detail. So take your time. You don't need to worry and over, overwork it. These, I'm going to just indicate that leaf part, the flower part of the petal. I don't want it to blend in and I want the some of the light on the edge. If If it's getting too blendy, like you might look at mine and say that and honestly if i were to do something like this i would take hours you know i would have fun coming back and forth so that looks fine but it's not looking uh like it's lifted off the blueberry so to make it lift off the blueberry i'm also going to need to add some dark under there just a little bit of dark i can see that these darks are really dark but we won't worry about it because we're going to add a little water and pull them out after we're finished once we get our whole all the dark areas in we're going to pull those out and if it's too dry it won't pull out very nicely so there is a there is a, a fine point um but i find because this is such a quick short little project it doesn't dry that fast i'm starting to pull that out a little bit i lost a little bit of the shape of this one up here so i'm going to wipe that out with a wet brush and just scrub right there because it just bled in but again it we don't need it perfect we want it just to be fun I can't wait to see what you guys do I'm gonna um <clears throat> do this inside now just taking another blue I do see look at with my big fat cursor I do see some circles in there 
Let me see if I can blow it up for you guys without messing up. See how there's definitely rings? You can definitely see those, those circles. So maybe just think about that. And this is an eight. If you have a six or a four, you can do it with the six or a four, but I, I really don't want you to get stuck on making it perfect. We want it to just have fun. This is all about having fun. I do see those circles though. They do kind of make it. That's kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> all right, now these, pet these petals of the leaves are darker. So that's kind of fun. So we don't have to worry about them blending into the background. Oh, I got some paint on my finger down here. <clears throat> Usually when I paint, I put my pinky down and lift and just move my arm in the brush. But because I was trying to get detailed in here, I um, put my finger accidentally, my pinky finger went into this wet paint underneath. So I'm going to finish these petals. And then remember we talked about a little bit of a shadow underneath. I'm just going to take some water before that gets too dry and just get it wet and scrub, scrub, scrub a little bit and pull it out scrub a little bit and pull it out and there's my shadow so it's already there for me if it really bothers you and if this was a commission piece and I was gonna uh, make a lot of money out of it <laughs> I would take my little magic eraser and I would um, take it off but because this is our piece and we're having fun and I'm just gonna try to scrub it in there and wash it in if you wanted to, you could pick it up a little bit, but also it's kind of fun that it bleeds into the background. It gives it a little more interest. In fact, this might be a good time to take some of your, well, let's not, I'm gonna do that at the end. I was gonna splatter like this, just splatter some colors on there, but I think it's still too wet. So here we go. We're gonna rub now those dark parts that I put in, that I set in before. I'm just gonna now soften them. And that's that blending technique. We're just going to soften them up a little bit and get a little more detail in here. And it's fun. I think we're well over time, and I apologize. Um, uh, text me. Send me a little message. Let me know how you guys are doing. Do you need more time? We haven't done the green leaf yet. Um, I think I could do this all day. I love it so much. And I love that. <laughs> Say again, Laura. Yeah, I, I'm having a good time today. I hate that I, I'm going to have to quit. I know. I don't want to quit, but we will. I know. I won't keep us. But I'm just now blending out those those things. And I promise when you guys look back at this after you're done, you'll look back and you'll really like it. Um, maybe put a couple more darker in here. Just, just a hint. We've got to add the leaves. More time, please. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I want more time, too. Um, here we go. So <clears throat> this does look kind of funny. It's got, it has like the light blue and then the dark blue. I got to let that dry, but I'll soften that blue up in the middle for, for the blueberry because I, I don't want it to stand out like that. I think this one looks kind of fun. It does look like it's blooming. And then this other one, um, I'm going to put a little bit of brown in there, just a dab because it has that brown. Now, since I added the brown in there, I want to carry it over. I'll put a little brown in there and a little brown in there and maybe just a little bit in the wash underneath. Um, it makes the eye move over your paper. It makes the eye move over your painting. So it's not just one brown spot in the middle of your painting. Um, any green that you love, I... I been using the sap green since we started this whole thing and I've been really happy with that I want to just do a wash of a sap green here and a wash of a sap green here uh, I'm leaving a little bit of white space because I don't want to blend out that purple or the blue if it's not dry yet just gonna indicate a question for you yes so the the sap green I don't have a green in any of my sets called that what what colors would you blend to get that? That's a really good question, Laura. So for sap green, if you use, let me open up my book here. If you use, I'll turn it here. If you use your, there's a, a green in there. It's called, it's a, what do we call it? Yellow, yellow green. I lemon, think lemon, wait. Yellow green, yes. Okay, so it's a yellow green. So here I'm putting a plot of yellow green on there on my sample. And then I'm going to grab yellow ochre. 
And if you just take a little bit of yellow ochre, and when you're mixing colors, just mix a little bit at a time. I'm going to put some yellow ochre in here, and I'm going to see how I like that color. And I think it could use more yellow ochre. If, it, if it's too much yellow ochre and it doesn't look sappy green, then you go ahead and add green again. But um, there we go. So you see how now it's looking a little more closer to that one? Mm -hmm. I might need to add some more of the green. And you play around with it. If it's not brown enough, okay, that's pretty close. And it's actually really nice. That's really close. You might, let's say it's a little, little bit um, not dark enough. If I want it darker, I'm going to add just a little bit of blue to it. Watch what happens when I drop in some blue. So in your book, if you guys, on your, in your little dictionary, if you write yellow ochre, And then you write me, uh, I'm going to call it medium green, but I think it was yellow green, wasn't it? Or just, what was it? Yeah, just yellow green. Because the other green is the emerald green, and that, that goes in a different direction. And what was, what do you remember? Tell me what you. Yellow green is the one that we use, but and in the set that I got from you, the yeah. other green I have is emerald green, and that doesn't go in the right direction of what you're doing so the emerald green has, it's a green, but with a lot of blue in it. Yeah, it's a lot of blue, like a teal almost. Yeah, I was trying to fish for that. Okay, so I'm loving my blueberries. It's, it's, I definitely would have fun and I would play a little more. So if yours are not done, don't worry, just have fun. I'm going to take out that little watercolor uh, wash down there just to brighten this up. And it's probably just showing more movement and adding some dark sh shadows here. I did want to color that in. Uh, some of it's wet, so I'm just com coloring part of it that would be in the shade, because this should be pretty dark. Uh, there's some darkness in here, but I don't want to lose that. But it's it's like my language. It's what I want to say in my, <laughs> my blueberry piece. So you use your own language and feel free to have fun with it. Like, it doesn't have to be anything that looks like anybody else's. It's just really be creative. Don't you just want to go out and have a blueberry? All right, yeah. the leaves. That was the last thing I wanted to show you. Oh, I've been using this little X-Acto knife quite a bit lately. Um, I've been finding that the effect is kind of fun. You don't have to use an X-Acto knife. You can use like a, business, a credit card or something, the back of a paintbrush. Um, and then... I've been having fun just kind of putting the veins in and you may not see it right now, but watch what will happen. And that's, I think what I like about it. And I, I used to like not put veins in at all. I used to think, Oh, I don't want veins in that takes away from the watercolor, but I've been liking this so much that I've been adding it to most of mine. Um, yeah, so you can, or you don't have to. Some of the paper picked up, so be careful. Uh, in your little kit, you might want to get a little exacto knife. I think a toothbrush would work too. You could, yeah, you could get a toothbrush. Did somebody say that? Uh, Emily, how are you doing? How are you doing? Is it coming along? Notice that if it's semi dry and I start going over it, I'm going to start picking up the color, and you don't want to do that. If you feel like you're picking up your color and it's going back down to the paper, just stop. Stop there and come back to it. And that's the hardest part about watercolor is it's hard to stop and come back. All right, now I'm going to take a little darker green. I'm going to use some of that that, Laura, you were talking about, that emerald green. And I'm going to mm -hmm. wash it. I'm going to wash it in on the leaves and watch what happens. Look at the veins that come out. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Tell me if you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up. Oh, good, Emily. I'm glad you're loving it. Let me know if you guys like this veins business with the leaves. Isn't that cool? I love how it just pops out. Watch this side. So what happens is you're, you've, you've got the one color on already, and then um, you've, it's putting a glaze over it. And I put a glaze over, and the veins are dark. Now, on a normal... Oh, good. I'm glad you love it. Um, thanks, Pat. Anna, um, if you were to be exact and you wanted this painted to be exact and, you know, then first of all, we probably wouldn't be painting this topic, 
but in the picture oh good i'm glad you guys love it thanks so much for telling me in the picture see how the veins are clear or they're white so in my watercolor classes when i'm painting flowers and we're painting leaves one of the lessons in the leaves is we do do a wash we do a wash first and then we we paint in the um the overcoat which is the the green so but for this i just thought it was kind of fun getting that extra little technique in there yeah i thought that was kind of fun i love that you have yeah thank you i'm glad you think it's a good technique it's just fun this is all just fun so excited to have you guys here um thank you so much for coming we will do this again tuesday and if you want to get the email i send an email out on sunday with the link for the free monday watercolor class at three o'clock uh it's with zoom which is what laura and i are doing right now so that i can see you and we can all talk and if anybody has any questions they can ask me their questions right then and there i need your email and once you've given me your email i'm all set i have your email and i'll send it if you have not gotten your invite um please email me um it's art yourself studio dot com is the website and there's a place to send in your email or if you want to email me directly it's virginia at art yourself studio dot com and you can email me directly and if you'd like to be in invited to the monday free monday class i'd love to have you um this has been really fun we do a little more advanced not advanced we just do a little more detail and we take a little more time probably like we did today i don't know why i'm taking so long i'm so sorry i think it's been about 45 minutes or or so um anybody have anything they want to say if your blueberries are ready please post them you need to just go to art yourself studio uh art yourself studio on facebook Okay, I just, see, I keep playing um, on Facebook, and then you can post. There's a place for you to post, and you just post your picture. Show me what your picture is. Tell me what you think. Um, I love it because then I get to see. I get to see what you're painting. Even if you're not live with me right now, if you're watching later, go ahead and uh, post it so we can see it. Laura and I will be checking back if anybody had any questions, and uh, we will answer any questions that you have. Um, what else? Am I missing anything, Laura? I think you're doing a great job, Jenny. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate you being here, and this has been fun. Um, yeah. What, um, oh, hi, Marcy. Welcome. You'll have to watch the stream. We're just finishing up our little blueberries, but you have your paints. I hope you, uh, try to paint with, uh, paint the blueberries with us it's really been fun um laura last next week is the last one of your session and then we're going to yes. start a new watercolor session they're going to be six sessions long each uh week it'll be a different topic is there a topic that you want to do specially next week you're asking me if i want something special yes ma'am um i don't know are we going to revisit the gems or that's going to be later on. We can revisit the gem. Let's do, you want to do the emerald? We can do the gems. Yes. We can do a ring. Yeah, the emerald especially. Yeah, the emerald. And then the reason why I have you do that is the reason why we're working on that is because eventually, I'm going to show you this picture. Can you see it? We're going to be doing a glass oh. crystal. So Beautiful. we work on those gems. That's one lesson. This is the advanced um, watercolor classes that I'm teaching. And it's just, it, it, they're all, everything kind of layers on top of each other, but you can still jump in. But um, that's why I'm working so hard with those gems. And I think the emerald was one that we should revisit. I, I agree with you. I think that's a good one. But that's why, because you're going to be painting crystal vases. Well, that'll be exciting. Yeah. We'll just have a little more teaching to do here. Morning. <laughs> You're not far behind. You're not far. You're not far away. Um, yeah, this is fun. Anybody else? Hi, Maloney. Welcome. I hope you guys get a chance to look at this. Maloney has had her um, children painting with us, and they she posts their pictures, and mm -hmm. it's so fun. Does, does anybody have indigo in their stash of paintings you can also use like an indigo if you want to get a little more uh, shadow 
All right, I think we, I think I've covered it. Although I really want to play more. Come with me. Come visit on Mondays, guys. Three o'clock Monday. Send me your email. I'll send you the Zoom link, and then we can talk and answer any questions you might have. Um, this is at this point is when I have to stop. I do have a hard. <laughs> you know when your painting is getting soupy and you really need to stop. So it, I would advise anybody if they're getting frustrated, that's a sure sign that you've got to stop. <laughs> Because that means you're just you're you know going working it too much and watercolor has to be peaceful it has to rest it has to absorb the paper it's kind of a fun technique I'm lifting up some color here I dropped some more in and lifting it up all right I'm done.